guys, so let's get started with transactions. So what are transactions? Uh, if you think back to Blockchain Warehouse, where we were talking about these articles that we put inside the block, in the box, um, those are transactions. So the, it's like your computer, books and so on. And all of these articles are actually a transaction. Now, how does the ownership of these coins work now? So how do we know in Bitcoin, for example, uh, who owns what Bitcoin? And Bitcoin is using here some UTXO, it's called Unspent Transaction Output Schema. And that's some more abstract model. So it's not like you know it from your bank account. Yeah, you have this balance on your bank account, this amount of money you have. In Bitcoin, it's a little difficult there, but it, this has some reason. And so all transactions are actually linked by a digital sig signature. So you have some inputs, a lot of inputs and output. So transactions are actually the thing that shows how much money you have. So you own actually uh, the access to some outputs. That's your balance. And in Ethereum, it's different. So in the Ethereum blockchain in the network, uh, we have account based model. That's similar to the uh, to the model, this familiar model that we know this banking account model. So this is more, uh, more uh, easier understandable uh, model where you know exactly how much money you have. So you have some balance. But how does this UTXO uh, model work now? So each this trend, so a transfer is signed by a hash of previous transaction and the public key of next owner. So what does this mean now? So the transaction, the previous one, so where it came in, and the public key of the one who is getting this uh, amount. So he, those two things are hashed. So you know exactly who, who will get the next one, who has access to the next. This is the output then. And a lot of these inputs and outputs are in this chain. So a lot, in, a lot of inputs and outputs. And you, like we said already, you don't own a coin. So coin in quote because it's more like outputs you rather own outputs so you have outputs and those belong to your private key so to your hand in the blockchain warehouse example so all these coins are outputs actually and miners are generating bitcoin through a special kind of transaction it's called the coin based trans uh, transaction so this happens uh, first in the block, in each block we have a coin-based transaction. That's the first one who has no input. So a that's a, a special transaction with no input. Normally we have inputs where the money came from and outputs where the money goes to. And in a coin-based transaction, no input because this is new Bitcoin, new generated Bitcoins. Now do the rule of a UTXO schema so how does it work now with the balance so we sum up all the inputs um, they must be greater than the sum of the outputs uh, if we have uh, input one and input two input one has for example one btc so btc is the shortened form of for bitcoin the currency and input two has four btc and those two belong to our account, to our private key, to our hand. This, those two articles, for example, they belong to us. And we want to send it to someone else. We want to give over ownership to someone else. That's the output. And we are having two PTC for that. So we want to send two out. And we have, in total, we have five. So that's totally valid. So it's not some, that we are uh, spending something we don't have. And we also are uh, able to have access to it. So all reference inputs must be valid and not spent. So we didn't spend it yet and it's valid. That's the important thing here. This, this is checked by the warehouse managers, what we talked about in blockchain warehouse or actually the miner. So, or the nodes, the nodes are, ch the nodes are checking those things. 
and the signature of the output transaction must match the signature of the owner. So how does a wallet handle transactions now? Uh, a, a wallet, like you know, uh, you can imagine the wallet, the, it's like your paper wallet, but a wallet is also a node. So actually it's a lightweight node. We will talk about this later. So your wallet is actually also a manager in the block, blockchain warehouse. So the wallet is a manager. And the, this wallet combines all the, uh, the multiple output transactions, if necessary, to match the required amount. So if you have two less in one output, it will take multiple of the outputs from you and puts them together so it fits this required amount that you want to send. So this input, sorry. So the inputs, if we, if these inputs are matching the required amount you want to send, then they are uh, bound together. Um, additions is handled as change and return to the sender. So everything that you uh, want to get back as change, you have to specify in a separate uh, output then. Because the problem here is if you don't specify that, uh, your money gets lost. It will get uh, handled as a minor fee. So you have to be really careful with that. All, all these uh, wallets that you use nowadays, they are doing this anyway. But if you program something on with blockchain and you create some wallet and so on, you have to make sure that you also uh, send back the money to you. Because everything that you don't specify in output uh, will go as a will go to the miner as a minor fee. So, like you said, the difference now between input and output, everything that is uh, the difference there uh, is the mining fee. So this is what the miner will get. How is a transaction now structured? So we have this table, like we had it for the block. Uh, how it looks like the transaction? Uh, it starts with four bytes, the version. This is again for developers more important that we know exactly which structure this uh, transaction uh, has, so how it looks and so on. This version gets increased if something changes there. Then we have one to nine bytes of input counter. That's actually the total amount of inputs we had in this transaction. Um, then the variable, this uh, variable lengths of input. So those are all the inputs that came in. Then we have again one to nine bytes of output counter where we calculate the amount of outputs and a variable length of outputs with all the outputs and at the end a four bytes lock time. This some kind of timestamp or block number which will be included in the block after this time. So you can specify some something with that. Um, comparing now this UTXO model and account-based model, what are now the differences there? For UTXO, uh, it's much simpler to scale uh, if the network grows. That's the benefit there, because you can have parallel processing across multiple addresses. That's not so easily possible with account-based models. Uh, it's less critical bugs, so it has less critical bugs. We, so a better security because it's some fundamental stuff, not uh, some apps, uh, some more higher level like this account-based model where you can have more security issues. Uh, it allows this SPV, this single payment verification used by light uh, wallets. And in this account-based model, we we have or uh, it allows easier access to to smart contracts. So we will talk about this later. Account-based model is used in Ethereum, for example. So it's easy to use smart contracts with this kind of model. With UTXO models, it's really hard to make up the smart contracts. Uh, it's also easier to understand and to read the balance than with UTXO. So saves more space and that's the benefit here. Now, maybe if you are, uh, if you want, you can check now on Blockchain Explorer. There you can see all transactions that are happening. Uh, I put up the link again. So you can see there when transactions happen, the IDs, and you can find them easily there. You can also look up transactions from you if you made some. So check it out and see you.